for two short years. We were the guinea pig class. We were the experiment to see if women could really fly military planes. Over 1,000 American women took to the skies. Our mission was to fly. Piloting military aircraft for the first time. I flew 36 different kinds of planes. They did it for the love of flight. Oh, I just like flying. And the love of country. If I can help so that some man can go over and fight this war, that's all that was important. Until December 20th, 1944, when it all came to an end. That was the saddest day in my life. They were known as WASP, Women Air Force Service Pilots, and this is their story. Between 1938 and 1942, the United States went from discussing the possibility of war with Nazi Germany to declaring war on Japan and entering what would become the most widespread conflict in global military history. In 1939, less than a month after Germany invaded Poland, one of the pioneers of American aviation had lunch with Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt. With men heading off the combat, she saw a potential for a shortage of pilots, and she had a plan. Her name was Jacqueline Cochran. At that time, she told Mrs. Roosevelt that she felt that eventually that there might be a war, and that if so, that she believed that if the women were given the same training as the men, they would be equally capable of flying those airplanes. Those airplanes were military airplanes. Jackie Cochran was an experienced aviator, a veteran of air racing, and was determined to have women flying military aircraft to help the war effort at home. When her plan didn't move forward stateside, she decided to help out overseas. So Jacqueline Cochran got together 25 women pilots who had lots and lots of hours and took them to England. General Hap Arnold was chief of the Army Air Force. A strong Air Force is absolutely essential to keep war out of America. General Arnold had promised her that if and when he needed women pilots. At first he said to her he just didn't think he needed women pilots. He needed fighter pilots. But if and when he ever decided that he did, that he would let her know that she would be in charge of him. This was not his first conversation with Jackie Cochran. They had been discussing the potential need for female pilots to fill in for the men who were overseas for the last three years. It was time to put the WASP program into place. I think that you people here are entitled to a little bit of background. I think he became an advocate. I don't think he was in the beginning. Um, in his last speech to the WASP, he said he didn't know that a wee slip of a girl, and that's what he called them, a wee slip of a girl could handle the controls of a, of a big bomber in heavy weather, but the WASP proved that they could. I want to be a Miss HP and a little bit more. I want to be a WASP trainee and a little bit more. I want to be a graduate and then I'll ask no more. For all my bonus coming to me. November 1942, 28 women, the first class. WASP class 43-1 arrives at Houston Municipal Airport for training. We were the guinea pig class. We were the experiment to see if women could really fly military planes. They didn't know whether girls were gonna make it or not, so we had choices in the first class. You could either go to the ferry command and ferry planes, you could tow targets, or you could teach cadets. Well, I had a choice, so I picked the ferry command. Betty Blake may have chosen ferry command once she was accepted as a WASP, but she did not choose her love of flight. That was born out of her childhood in Hawaii, growing up not far from the military base at Pearl Harbor. I was 14, and I uh, had a neighbor who was a pilot in the Navy. He was a PBY pilot, and he lived a few doors away and I used to like to go out to the airport. I did all the 
mailing all the statements to the students and things like that for which they gave me free blind time. I got an instructor's rating and a commercial license and I started teaching out at the airport. And uh, I was dating this Navy ensign who was on the California when, when Pearl Harbor happened. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the empire of Japan. His ship was sunk. He was at our house spending the night that night. My father invited him to spend the night, which saved his life. Betty Blake left Hawaii in 1942 with her Navy ensign husband and moved to Philadelphia. Her husband shipped out and Betty, looking for a new challenge, became a WASP, a member of the first class, Class 43-1. I flew 36 different kinds of planes, all the fighter planes. They were called pursuits then, now they're called fighters. Single seaters, most of them. And uh, I flew the twin and four engine. B-17s, B-25s, but you just never know. You, you leave on an overnight trip and you might be gone two weeks because every place you stop, they give you a plane to take somewhere else. Betty Blake's career as a WASP ended when she left the program in 1944. Her career as an aviator ended soon after just before she married her second husband. He said, it's either me or flying, make a choice. Because I, I had a, an offer to fly out of India, across the Atlantic and into India in that area where he'd been. But he said, I'm not gonna wait around. When I get back, I, you better, we're gonna get married or else goodbye. And I decided he was worth marrying. It would be decades before Betty Blake could see the impact her flying had on American history. I had finished high school, I was 19, and I started working in the bank and I was a teller. So when these good looking flight instructors would come in to cash their checks, all they wanted to talk about was flying. And one day I asked one of them, just because I'm a girl, why can't I learn to fly? So I just kept flying. And eventually, of course, then uh, the WASP program came into being and uh, I heard about it, but I wasn't old enough. You had to be 21 to apply and you had to have your private pilot's license. So uh, I had to wait until I was old enough. And the day I was 21, I sent in an application to apply to go into training. Dini Parrish, a young bank teller from Avon Park, Florida, was about to go on the ride of her life. We were told from the very beginning, do not write home and tell your family what you're doing. They didn't want the enemy to know 